Hey everyone, welcome back to another Krita tutorial. Today I'm going to go over Krita 4.3, which has a ton of updates. Some of them I have no current use for, but they're still really interesting. And I know that a lot of uh, a lot of you that watch this use Krita not just for digital illustration, but photo editing and other things as well. And I think that they might be useful to you more than they might be useful to me. So I'm going to start off with the simple stuff first. Um, for more for the illustrators, the photo editors, uh, this might be something you're, you're more interested in. Uh, I'm going to start with the magnetic selection tool. Now this is a little laggy for me, and I believe this is because of this image here. This is the high res image that I stupidly put in here, because I didn't save out the low res image. So we're just going to roll with it. It's fine. So I wanted to use this image because I know that there's a lot of blur. There's a lot there's very little crisp lines in here, except like around here in the bubbles. And I wanted to really test to see how this magnetic selection tool works. The first way to use this is to click and drag. So click and just start dragging. It will make the points for you. And that does pretty well. I mean, I'm not really trying that hard to keep it to whatever, the shape. And the nice thing is you can change the location of the points because, oops, uh, uh, there are some areas that might not be that smooth or it might jet out here a little bit, which is totally fine. You know, with this particular image, I expect that. And then to cancel that, just hit escape. Another thing you can do is just click on the points. And as you can see here, it didn't really work that well, so I went, oops, it's because I didn't put enough points here. It's kind of like um, using the Bezier to uh, tool. If you don't put enough points, it's not going to give you a nice enough curve. And that's okay too. And then I wanted to see how it would react to this area here. So I started here, where it's very hard to tell a line, and it worked out really nice. And I'm really not trying to make it perfect. I'm just going to drag it in a straight line. And it picks up the um, edge of the fin really, really well. And it picks up, oh, it's lagging. Let me start that. It's picking up even the round shape really well. And as I go to the eye, and I right, go back here, if I like this, I can just hit enter and the selection is made. And voila, it's done. Uh, it saves you a lot of time as well, which I like. And then I'm gonna hide this one. So save me some processing power. I wanted to use this one because it's a black outline, it's solid for the most part. There really isn't a lot of blur except for the fact it's a little bit of a low res image. Um, so we'll see how this works. I'm just going to jump over this gap on the snake. And then kind of go down the sh our shoulder here. And as you can see I picked up my pen, but it'll pick up as I make uh, another point here, which is really nice. The only area it has a problem with, it's where I would really expect it to, is this intricate detail on the sleeve and the jacket here. I can just move the points here and they'll snap there. Well, not really snap, but they'll move back there. And that, that works out mainly because I believe it has, it's looking for, I'm guessing high contrast areas and that's kind of what this is and do love line work so that can be a little difficult for it to pick up but otherwise i think it works out really nice and the fact that i can just edit the points myself anyway it's pretty nice again you hit enter you have your selection you can do whatever you need to do really nice tool really simple to use go back to the brush now i'm going to go over the new watercolor brushes so I am making a white filler because for me, I had a little bit of a problem using some of the watercolor brushes without a white filler. This could very well be user error on my part, or it could be a setting of mine, or maybe that's just, it works best with a white background, which is totally fine. So I'm going to start with the first one here, which is basic lines dry. Oops. You can't put white and white. Let's do a uh, purple color. 
So this, it's very light. But you can see some texture with the brush. And there's the next one. Same thing, but it looks like it's doing it would have a little bit more water to it. So when you have more water on your brush, that that color or that pigment spreads more, but it doesn't stay in one spot. And then we'll use the next. You can see it's getting a little more textury. Like the water is kind of spreading it, and then we get to this brush. This is this is where it gets fun. So as you can see, like, oh, that's just water, right? Oh, I'm on the eraser mode. Sorry. This is very very light. My opacity is wrong. Sorry about that. I was playing with them earlier. Um, there we go. Now this is how it should be. This, if I have water on the brush and pigments kind of being pushed to the sides, that is pretty nice. I can actually lower the opacity to make that even lighter. As you can see, the lighter my stroke is, the more water, I guess you could say, is added. This color is horrible. I am the worst with colors, guys. I'm so sorry. Alright. There we go. So as you can see, there's be like more water here. I'm lightly going over. And then if I put more pressure on my brush, there's more color being shown. I'm stuck on the eraser for everything today. This is probably my favorite 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 one out of all of them because this to me gives the most watercolor feel now if you're watching the strokes watch carefully right here from where my first stroke is you can see that it's lighter in the middle and the pigment stays closer to the edge kind of like this but this is as if I have way more water and if I go over this again it kind of push the, pushes some of that pigment right here away which is really cool it's just it's just it gives me that watercolor feel and it makes me happy I haven't used watercolors in forever and this it's just really nice if you want to blend it uh, there's it's like just water you can do that as well and then get that nice ah it's so nice I don't really know how to describe this guys I'm so sorry it's just I appreciate the work that um, I don't remember his name, I'm so sorry for that too. I'll put it like in the in text on the big in the screen here somewhere. They he obviously knew what he was doing when he was making these brushes and the the team or whoever else was involved and they they work really well. This, this is just they're beautiful. You know, and these are smudge like not smudge, but they're what are they called? spread pattern so if you need to add some more of that pattern this works better with a light stroke so if, if i put pressure and there's that big um brush size it's really laggy but if you just use little strokes it works better i think or just light strokes and it adds more of that color and more of that texture to the edge that's actually some prep on blend that in a little. Oh, it's so it, it's like a perfect blend. I I just this makes me so happy. It really does, guys. <laughs> All right, so enough of that. So those are the watercolor brushes, and they're really really nice. Um, sorry. Uh, if you are interested in using them, I definitely would try them out. Um, I did have some issue. You're supposed to be able to use the eraser tool and kind of take some color away as if you were adding water. It hasn't worked for me. I don't know if it's because of my display settings. So it's something I will have to look into. And it doesn't work as well, or some of the brushes don't work as well on a transparent layer for me. Um, it's something I'm going to have to look into and see if it's a bug, if it's something that I'm doing. Um, but it's not enough for me to go, well, I'm just not going to use it. Alright, so now that we've done that, I'm going to actually crop this image to save on space. Um, 
We don't need the full thing. It should be fine. Alright, so now that I've cropped it, let's say I want to save this, right? But technically everything that is still outside the canvas, um, I mean not with cropping, but if I'm drawing outside the canvas here, and then go to do the selection, that whole stroke is there. I don't want it to be there. If you go to your settings, configure Krita uh, file handling, you can trim uh, the files before saving. So all that stuff that would be outside the canvas of that stroke I made would be cropped or be trimmed off and it wouldn't exist anymore and that will save you file space. And that was an issue that people were having with Krita where it would save your strokes if you actually made them outside the canvas and it really bothered people. It is off by default because I guess there are some people that do like to save some stuff outside the canvas and then bring it in later, you know, for whatever reason. I'm going to leave it off by default because I never really had a problem with it, but I might turn it on later um, in the future, depending if my computer has too much uh, stuff saved on it. My files are, I mean, they're big by, excuse me, by nature, so it's not a big deal. So that's pretty cool to, for them to add. Uh, another thing that they added, we'll go over next, are new, I think three new filter layers. This is where I'm going to struggle, and I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I I don't know how to explain these things, because whenever I read the documentation, I always feel like they're too technical for my brain to handle, even though that's not the case. So the gradient map, it's supposed to be taking the color of lightness, light and dark, and apply this gradient to it based on that um, light to darkness ratio that you're setting up. And if you do the dither, you can add a pattern to it. Um, this is also slow for me, and I don't know if that's just me or if that's just the nature of the filter, which it, it very well could be. Um, that's fine. Let me wait for this to do its thing here before I continue. Okay. So filter layer, back to the gradient. Uh, we're going to change this to white and black. That should be fine. And it will change the color as well. So we'll add this over here. We're just going to mix this up a little. Lighten that. If you notice, this is much faster. Isn't that nice? This is wonderful. I'm so happy. Because <laughs> before, I'd always have some lag. Oh, this is nice. Good job, Frida. Alright, so there's that. We're going to go to dither. This is all going to look weird as I'm updating this. I'm going to use I'll do stars, and we'll wait for that to update. As you can see in the background, it's already updating. Okay, so this has been updated. So it like changes the, so this is all the same pattern. It doesn't change the size or anything, but the, uh, you can see that there's different shading or light and dark going on. Like this star right here, it's gray here, it's black here, it's white here. Like, it's white background here, but it's black background here and uh, here. It, it, it's got an interesting effect to it. Um, I'm not sure if this is something I would personally use, but you never know. And if you change these gradients to colors, it will apply the color as well. So maybe you want an overall pattern for, let's say, something like this. And let's see how that looks. We'll wait for that to load. All right, well, maybe that didn't work as well as I thought it would. Um, but it still has the same concept, the dark area, because this jacket's the darkest. So it kind of inverts that here. So yeah, uh, that kind of is something interesting to play with if you want to add some, you know, spruce up your uh, work. All right, so now the palletize. They can also do something that's similar with the dither. So you can change different um, palettes here. So I think it's the default one. I just so we'll change this one here. And I think um, I'm not sure if these are palettes that you can save or the ones that you have saved. I actually don't remember if I saved any palettes. So we're so I'll have to look into that. You can change the color space to lab or RGB. See if RGB has any major difference. 
yeah, RGB kind of retains some of my colors. But lab has more interesting results. So again, with the pattern, you can see a little bit of the pattern here in this jacket. You can see way more room than lab. And it does change the color scheme a little bit as well. Offset the scale. So that's kind of interesting. It's just uh, more filters to create more artistic um, let's do that. Uh, effects to your work. Then the last one that I think most people would be most interested in is um, under edge detection is the Gaussian high pass. All right, let me actually make this to 30 because it didn't, it won't um, have a good effect if you don't put it to a high number. What this is going to do is it's going to, it's basically a sharpen, and the goal was to, not the goal, but one of the reasons to use this is it when you upload it like Twitter or Instagram or Facebook a lot of those sites will really give you a low res image after updating it or uploading it because it needs to save them space on their servers and their systems they're not going to put like a 10k image up just because you want a 10k image to upload into your site it's just not happening your own personal site you could do that I don't know how much space you got or how much you're paying for it but it's gonna eat up a lot of bandwidth so they always kind of really distort or just ruin the quality. And a lot of times I try and avoid this by just making sure my image is already low in uh, file size, but sometimes that still doesn't work. So let's say the radius is at 30, we'll say okay. Um, we're going to put this at overlay. And I don't know if you can tell, but it looks really different. Let's take that off. Turn it back on. It kind of gives an interesting look around the edge. It almost adds a, a shadow or a lightness around it, which I think is pretty neat. It gives it more depth, and the lines look a lot clearer. Like from, let's see, turn that off. So this file was already kind of low res to begin with. So when I turn this on, it gets a little sharper. And if I zoom out, say here, turn that off, and turn that back on, that filter layer really makes it pop a lot more. And that's kind of what you want when you post your images online. You want your stuff to pop. You don't want the down resing to um, ruin the look of your image. And it does change, it looks like it changes the color a little bit, but it really doesn't. It's just, um, um, Kind of brightening the edge of it. So if you have properties, we can change that. So if I want to bring this down to 20, maybe it's too much. You bring it down to 15, and that really reduces it. You know that you don't see as much of a um, almost a halo around it. It doesn't look as as sharp, but it's still sharper than the original. The nice thing is you don't have to duplicate the layer for this, you don't have to do any of that. You just have to put that up the layer. Or have that layer selected and then apply it. So that's cool. I, I think that's a really neat feature. I'm I'm not sure if I will um, use it for uploading, but you can also use it for textures for 3D. If you bring something in, you really need to make those um, black edges or those dark edges pop more to make them sharper to really give that effect in your map, that would be a good way to use it as well. So we have another um, really neat add-on, which is the gradients. Well, it's not really an add-on, but they added some extra options. They have a um, spiral. They have two, the regular spiral and the reverse. They have bilinear. Uh, I guess we didn't have this bilinear before. I don't use gradients that much, so I wouldn't really know. But it looks pretty neat. Um, so this is it's basically one big stroke and then you have the colors on the side versus a linear which is just one stroke here right so bilinear would be on both sides and the radial is it the radial? spiral sorry um, looks like this now you can change it you can do none It'll look like that. It's great, right? 
can do alternating. Like that. I'm on a transparent one still, aren't I? Uh, let's do this one. This one cool. There we go. That looks pretty cool. So if we do forwards, that's what it looks like. We do alternating. That's what that's kind of alternates the um, colors a bit more. And then if we use a transparent color scheme, which is this here, it will actually let me do the reverse spiral here for this. So when you do the gradient for the spiral, if you do like a, a short click and drag, you get more sp oof, more spirals. I'm sorry if this hurts your eyes. Let me fix that. Eh, close enough. So with that transparent um, transparency in this gradient, you can see the previous spiral I made in the background, which is pretty cool. I could uh, do some interesting effects. Alright, so that's enough for... I'll get stuck in those if I uh, do this anymore. <laughs> Make a layer here. And then the snapshot docker. Let's say... Turn this back on. Add the brush. Um, we want to make some edits, but we want to compare the two edits. So we make a snapshot here. Add the brush on. We'll just add some... Uh, we'll add some alien ears. I'm not on the right layer. Nope. And add another snapshot. We'll load the first one. We'll go, hmm, do I like this one? Or well, the second one. Or do you like this one? This is a good way to have non destructive editing. Uh, if you like um, to make a lot of comparisons in your work, like you need to make a big change, you don't want to ruin your work, make another layer, all that stuff, you can just use the snapshot docker and then compare the two changes and follow the day. Which is pretty neat, you can delete them. So now that I've deleted my first snapshot, I can't change that. And your undo will not take it away. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Alright, and then the last thing is they added um, oh they added some extra tool options for the selection tool. So the wand one. There you go. You can do all uh, current layer, all layers, or color color labeled layers. And I don't have any layers that are labeled the color, so let's try make that yellow. Make that yellow. Now I can say I want to select everything on these layers. So that's pretty neat. I like they can do all layers or a current layer. There are some other features in Creator 4.3 that I want to go over, but I want to make sure I am using them properly and taking the time to learn them and you know the ins and outs and all that fun stuff before I explain it to you guys. But the tools I went over today were the easiest to go over and ones that don't require a lot of thinking or explanation and really you can see the results pretty quickly for themselves. Uh, I hope this video was interesting. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoy Creative 4.3 and I hope that these new tools, especially those watercolor brushes, they are beautiful, just wonderful, wonderful brushes. Uh, I hope you enjoy them as much as I most likely will in the future. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them in the comments below. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe for future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.